Hello everyone, happy Monday. I hope you had an incredible weekend. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If this is your first time here, these videos are where I tell ghost stories that my subscribers have sent in to me themselves. Ghost stories, weird stories. Um like haunted like paintings and shit. And I basically create a look, basically a way that I died and create a look around that look. <laughs> Yeah, so hi, welcome if you like ghost stories, if you like being scared but not too scared. Last week I cried, so if you like crying, <laughs> then hang around. There's, I think we're like 50 on number 51 or 52. I can't remember, so there's a lot to catch up on if this is your first time watching these videos. If you have any ghost stories yourself, you can go ahead and send them here to this email address. It doesn't have to be ghost stories, weird stories, weird paranormal experiences, um, just weird experiences. It doesn't have to be ghosts or, you know possessions. <laughs> and this series is very much based on Bailey Sarian's Murder Mystery Makeup Mondays. I will link her channel below, but I'm very sure you know who she is already. And I absolutely love her videos because she mixes something that she loves, makeup, and something that she's very interested in, true crime. And I thought, what a way. I never used to post videos on Monday. It was always um, Friday and Sunday. Now I don't do Friday, Wednesday and Sunday. And I thought Monday would be just a good day to post something that I'm interested in. And it's also when my favorite like um, paranormal channels release their videos. So I was like, okay, same. Um, yeah, so today's theme, I don't really have a theme as usual. Wait, let me think quick, 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 quick. Let's do it, let's do something really serious, no. Okay, and I have to ask for your help again. I need a theme for, t but here's what I'm gonna do basically. I want to use, I ordered from Auric the, um, this one, Smoke Reflect Ego, is that what it says? And it's this incredible like um, gray tone. To me, it almost has like an untone of green in there as well, if you can see it. And then same again with the, um, the, the kind of um, cream underneath. So I wanted to create a look with that, keeping it very simple, very smoky, um, yeah. And then I also have the Glow Lust. So I'm thinking glowy, but smoky, but... Yeah, I'm gonna use this first and see how it sits on the skin um, and then move on to my eyes. Cause this is like, it can be used as everything, right? So we're gonna do that. As I said, please send me your ghost stories. Let's just jump straight into it today. I mean, if you hear people outside, that's cause there's people outside and they're not all gonna stop for me. So <laughs> it's just snowed here again in where I am in the UK. So, you know, people are excited. Why is that wet? That shouldn't be wet. I do just also want to mention as well, I, I keep forgetting to do this. Um, I also want to put a trigger warning in front of these videos and there's no other way I can describe what's in these stories other than if you are triggered by death in any way, any way to die, that could be drug abuse, physical abuse, um, suicide, addiction, every single negative thing you can think that can happen to somebody may appear in these stories. Um, some of them can be quite intense and quite, some of them can be quite sad. Some of them can be quite fun and lighthearted and, and happy uh, with happy endings. But I just wanna give a trigger warning for everything, for absolutely every kind of possible way to die, to be physically hurt, to be emotionally hurt. Yes, I may need help with that. So our, so I'm just gonna pump this out. So our first story today is called Man in the Brown Jacket. It says, hello Robert, I love your stories, even though sometimes they terrify me. Me too, thank you. My parents married as youth. My mum was 14 in the deep south, USA, and I was born when my mum was 15 years old. When I was around two or three years old, I began having dreams about or being visited by a man. I can remember waking up and seeing him just standing in the room watching me. I remember he had brown hair, hazel eyes, and wore a basic brown suit with a tie and a jacket. He always just stood in my room and stared at me. By the time I was a teenager, I was in foster care and had shared a room with multiple other children. After that started, whenever the man would appear, I wouldn't be able to move or speak, which was new. He never touched me, but I knew he was evil and that I wasn't safe whenever I saw him. I was 25 when I first got my apartment alone. My room was at the end of a hallway. That first night, he visited me again. I decided enough was enough, and I bought some sage and something I'd been told was blessed holy water, and I walked around my new place telling him to stay the hell away. That night, I woke in the dark and couldn't get back to sleep. I sat up in bed and saw him at the end of a hall. 
with his fists bored and his eyes shining with fury. And as usual, he just glared at me. I got out of bed and moved towards the door when he began to race towards me so fast. I slammed the door and he stomped and pounded on it for several minutes before going quiet. I thought I must be having a nightmare, but my neighbor knocked on the door and asked me if everything was all right. I made up some excuse and stayed up for the rest of the night. A few years later, after my grandmother's funeral, I was going through her photo albums from the 40s and 50s, and I came across a black and white picture of her and my grandfather with this man wearing this suit. My aunt told me it was her father-in-law and that he had been sexually harassed and abused by my grandmother terribly during her marriage to my grandfather. They divorced in the 50s. This was only eight years ago. And I'll never forget how horrified and strange enough relieved that I felt finally knowing who it was that had been tormenting me my entire life. I burst into tears and told my aunt who actually believed and even said a prayer over me. I'm almost 40 now. And once I learned his identity, I never saw him again. Good riddance. Yeah. That is terrifying. I'm so glad that experience is over for you. That must have been so frightening. It does kind of make me think, why follow you though? Why follow you everywhere? Almost like your whole life and like torment you like that. Like you, why you, you know? And thank you again for sharing it with us. Thank you. So we have our first audio story. This is called not me. If you want to send in your story as audio form, then please do. It helps to kind of write it down and then read it as you go. So yeah, let's listen to this one. Ooh. Hi, Robert. My name is Crystal. I'm from Texas and I love your ghost story videos. I have binge watched them and I'm all caught up at this point. So I would like to share two experiences that I've had really quickly. So I'm just going to go ahead and get into it. The first experience happened when I was living with my parents. I was getting dinner in the kitchen and I was going to go back to my bedroom to eat. To get to my bedroom, I have to go through the living room, down the hallway to the bedroom. So I was passing through the living room and I saw my dad on the couch and I saw my sister standing behind the couch. And I just remember thinking, why did my sister change her shirt? We hadn't gone anywhere and we weren't going anywhere. And then I also saw my sister walk around to the front of the couch and sit next to my dad. So I just kept going, I passed through and I got to the hallway into my bedroom. And when I opened my bedroom, my sister was sitting on my bed and I screamed jumped and almost dropped my whole entire plate of food and I yelled what are you doing in here and she just looked at me really weird and she said what do you mean am I what am I doing in here I've been in here and she was wearing the shirt that I remembered her wearing that day so I ran out back to the living room to see who was sitting next to my dad and there was nobody there so that was the first experience the second one is I was at uh, happened when I was in college. I was living about two hours away from home, and every day after college, I would go home and take a nap. So one day I was taking a nap, and I was sleeping on my stomach when I just felt someone start pulling on my shoulder, and my body started tilting upwards like if I was being turned around I started screaming and crying and yelling um, but I couldn't open my eyes I couldn't do anything I just felt this really evil presence there so I grabbed onto the corner of the mattress to hold myself down then I just fell straight back onto my stomach and I went straight into a dream. In this dream, I dreamt that I was in Spanish class and I was sitting at my desk. And just for reference, I am Hispanic. My ancestry is from Mexico. And so somebody came up to my desk and set down one of those Mexican candles. 
and said, whatever is in there is really bad and you need this. And I'm staring at this candle when it started happening again. I felt my body being tilted upwards. And again, I started screaming, crying, praying, and holding on to the corner of the mattress. I couldn't see it, but I could feel it, and it just felt evil. I went back onto my stomach again, and I woke up fully. I had tears down my face. My face was really wet. I jumped out of bed, and I packed my bags, and I went the two hours back home to my parents' house. I stayed there for a couple of days and I told my mom about my experience and I told her while we were at dinner and my little sister was there. So she kind of just played it off a little bit at that point because I think she didn't want my sister to be scared. And then my dad ended up giving me a rosary that was blessed with holy water and I keep that above my bed to this day i still have it like on the corner post of my bed yeah but that was my second experience and that one was probably one of the scariest ones that i've had but the two of those are ones that stick out to me the most because they were so vivid so real feeling and i thought the whoever was in the living room was my sister and so it was just really real to me so Yeah, but thank you for listening. I hope you have a good day and I hope you enjoyed my stories. Bye. I did enjoy them. Thank you so much, ghosts or spirits or whatever, imitating somebody in your family, your child, your parents, imitating their voice. Then visually, a dog. We had like a a spirit that was like imitating the shape of a dog before. Those kind of stories terrify me because it's like, what are you trying to do? Um, but yeah, thank you so much for sending that in. I absolutely love an audio story. It gives me a chance to catch up on makeup. <laughs> oh no, I don't like the title. This is called Boy With A White Face. I'm gonna mix in my auric um, thing with my foundation just to get a really super glow. This is very strong. You don't need that much if, you, if you're gonna consider buying this thing. So don't go pumping out like a shitload on your hand because you literally need the smallest amount. Okay, so this story is called The Boy With A White Face. It says, hello, Robert. Firstly, I just want to say I just discovered your channel recently and loving you since then. Thank you so much. You are really amazing. Thank you. So this story is about our old home. Just a few days after we moved, it was a heavy, rainy day. My father and myself were on the rooftop when he told me to get something from my room down below. As I was entering my room, I heard someone reading the Holy Quran. And as soon as I walked inside, it stopped. There was nobody home. My father and I have always been into ghosts and can immediately tell if there's something wrong. After that, things like this used to happen all the time. Our things used to move places. My father used to put food out for them to eat in the drawing room and it used to disappear. They never hurt any of us though. One day, I was lying down on my bed when I heard someone calling my name. (laughs) Don't listen. It was an unfamiliar voice, plus everyone was sleeping. A few days later, I was reading a book, and in my room I heard footsteps. It was like someone was walking and jumping on my furniture. I looked at my bed, and I could see someone was walking on it. The footprints were there on the mattress. It started to go into our drawing room and lie there. I used to talk like they could listen, and they did. I wanted to see who he was, so one day I was offering Namaz prayer in my room, It was 7.30 p.m. As I got up, I glanced at my mirror and what I saw still gives me chills. There he was. Oh my God. Laying down on my bed, he had covered all his body with my blanket. Just his face was there. It was really big and round like a ball. It was really white and he had these big black eyes covering half of his face. There was no nose. He had a big smile going to his ears. He looked directly at me. I looked back at my bed and there was no one. I looked again in the mirror and I could see him. I couldn't believe my eyes. So I looked back and forth seven times until I believed. Oh no, what stops there? No. 
what happened? Is he still in your house? Oh my God, terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. <laughs> that description of that face, big round heart, oh, the big eyes. Oh, it made me burp, sorry, excuse me. That kind of thing though, that would, I mean, what do you do? Do you, st uh, like, I mean, <laughs> I don't know where to go with my thoughts. So, uh, as is custom, we have Marcus reading us two stories. Hi, Robert. Um, I'm recording this at 7.00 a.m., 08 a.m. in the morn, which is the hour that the ghosts start to make a salad in my kitchen really loudly. So I'm pretty scared at the minute, so I'm distracting myself with these scary stories. Right, this first one is called The Next Stop Sign. Hi, Robert. I'm a huge fan of you and your work, and I'm writing to you all the way from South Africa. Yes, you have fans everywhere, apart from in my house at the minute. When we were young, my dad worked at the mines, which was very far away from where we lived. Almost a three hour drive, so my dad left very early to go to work each day, sometimes as early as 3am. One day on his way to work, while driving, he saw a man on the side of the road hitchhiking. He decided to give him a lift. Everything was great. He was driving, having a chat, talking about nothing really. Then after a few minutes, the man proceeds to say, please drop me off at the next stop sign, because that's where I died. To this day, this story haunts the living daylights out of me. Also, my dad never went to work that day. He made a U-turn and drove straight back home. The second story is called Renee's Camp. Hi Robert, I hope this finds you well. I've been watching your videos for a while and love your ghost stories. Every summer from the age of 8 to 14, I spent at least a week away at a camp. It was a classic summer camp with hiking trails, campfires, lots of activities, and some of my favourite childhood memories were there. Eventually, when I got too old to be a camper, I got my first summer job, working in the camp kitchens with the other teenagers. It was so cool becoming part of the camp staff and learning all about the work that went on behind the scenes, the work to keep the place running. I learnt a lot of secrets that summer, the most dramatic of which was the story of Rene's Pond. Rene's Pond was a large pond in the middle of the forest that the campers were told to stay away from because it was full of snapping turtles. Looking back, the snapping turtles thing was probably a white lie, since snapping turtles aren't actually native to our area. Rene's Pond was supposedly named after the eldest daughter of the family that used to own the land the camp was built on. Rene was a bit of a recluse, and was said to be quite tall with long straggly hair. She had been suspected of witchcraft by some people from a nearby town, and was drowned in the pond that now bears her name. The details of the story would change depending on who was telling it, but pretty much everyone who worked at the camp believed Rene continued to haunt the place. There were plenty of stories about campers making imaginary friends who sounded eerily similar to Rene, or counsellors finding wet footprints in cabins that had just been cleaned out. Of course, when I first heard the story, I thought it was just a bit of fun, a bit of camp lore, didn't take it too seriously. My friends on the kitchen crew would play pranks on each other, pretending to be Rene. I took part in these, since at the time I had very long hair that I never brushed, so I fit the description pretty well. One night I was walking back from a camp bonfire with one of my friends from the staff. It was dark out and I remember the moon being almost full. We had to walk through the woods to get back to the staff cabins, but we knew the path pretty well. As we were walking, I spotted what looked like a figure standing among the trees. I stopped and pointed it out to my friend. We both assumed it was another staff member playing a prank on us, and my friend yelled, Yeah, very funny, but you can come out the woods now. The figure did not move. We stood in silence for a moment, and it began to dawn on us that this wasn't a prank at all. I swear as I was standing, staring at the figure, I saw it get taller, as if it had been slouching and was now drawing itself up to its full height. At that point my friend and I came to our senses and ran the rest of the way back to our cabin. We both stopped participating in the Rene pranks after that night. Long, straggly hair, probably a witch. Does that remind everyone else of Robert too? 
I'll see you next week. <laughs> thank you so much, Marcus, and thank you for those stories. I, I, I love a good camp story, like camp lore. Poor girl, though. So what if she did a little bit of witchcraft? This is uh, the Vision Liquid Highlighter from Ferocious Beauty. This is a shade Viper Ice. I just love how it doesn't look like um, my... It doesn't look like highlight. It looks like my skin. So that mixed with that Auric product looks incredible. Maybe I went a little bit too far with the glow. So I'm just going to mattify some areas that could usually be like sweat, you know? And I'm going to read to you. Oh, is it our last story? This is called Raggedy Ann Doll. I just, you already know. You already know. <laughs> so it's a hi river. I'm a college student living in America and I love your videos. Thank you so much. I'm a Korean and especially like your Korean makeup videos. Thank you so much. My parents are quite paranoid of serial killers and such. Same. And they had a rule that my sister and I couldn't go to sleepovers. We were allowed to take part in the party, but when it was late, my parents would always come and pick me up and bring me home. I just wasn't allowed to sleep there. My dad was very strict on this rule, but my mum always felt bad that I couldn't take part in the full sleepover experience. So I would always try and chip away at her sympathy and get her to let me sleep over. One day when I was in middle school, I think it must've been the seventh or eighth grade, I was invited to a girl's sleepover. As usual, I begged my parents to let me sleep over, and although they didn't say yes, I could tell they were close to letting me. I went over with my stuff, and I planned to push them a bit more when I was at the party. I was there with around five other girls, and we set up and hang out in a room they were planning to sleep in. This also happened to be the playroom of the girls whose birthday it was. And there were several toys and stuffed animals and things around the room. We were talking about boys and crushes and all the stuff teenage girls like to talk about. And we started to talk about our childhood toys. Birthday girl started explaining her connection with some of the toys around the room and she stopped at the Raggedy Ann doll that was on the shelf. It was very floppy and it was just laying there. It looked kind of creepy. Personally, I think all Raggedy Ann dolls look creepy, but that's just me. I agree. And she opened the window and said, this thing looks so creepy before throwing it out the window as far as she could. Now she lived in a neighborhood that was basically just woods with a giant road in the middle, but no one really drove through. So the doll was thrown into the woods and disappeared in the tall grass and trees. We continued to chat until we decided to go outside and play a bit in the woods. We went out and explored a creek that was nearby and said hi to some of the goats that the neighbors were keeping. We were coming back on the big road and turned back onto the driveway when we were stopped in our tracks. There on the side of the driveway, sitting up, remember it was super floppy, was the Raggedy Ann doll. We kind of squealed and were creeped out, but we thought maybe her parents or a cat or something had left it there for some reason. Another girl suggested that it landed there when it was thrown out the window and we all agreed, although thinking back on it, I realized there was no way because the birthday girl had thrown it in the opposite direction of the driveway. The birthday girl picked it up and threw it again into the woods, far enough that it disappeared again. We forgot about it quickly, jolly middle schoolers that we were, and we ate dinner and cake and played around and all that until later on to the night. It was quite late around 11 p.m. and I realized that my parents hadn't called, so I decided not to call them, hoping that this was their way of letting me know I could sleep over. We went back into the room that we had set up to sleep and one of the girls screamed and pointed at the shelf. There was the Raggedy Ann doll, dirty with leaves stuck to it, sitting on the shelf. We all screamed and ran out the room. I don't think this is what my parents were worried about when they wouldn't let me sleep over, but I wasn't about to be the stupid character in a horror movie that stays in a creepy place for the night. So I called them and asked them to pick me up and take me home. I've told this story to a lot of people, and one of the suggestions I get very often is that the birthday girl's parents could have been outside and found the doll and put it back on the shelf. This was impossible for two reasons. First, both her parents were inside with us the entire time. We came back into the house after she threw the doll into the woods for the second time, because they were looking after us, eating, and telling us embarrassing stories about the girl. They didn't exit the house 
or even go to the bathroom during the whole time. So there was no way her parents could have put the doll there. Second, even if they could, her parents kept everything quite clean and there was no way they would place the doll dirty and stuck with leaves on the shelf in the room that we were planning to sleep in. Anyway, here was my story. I don't get that scared by it anymore because I feel like it was a birthday girl's problem and I didn't like her much anyway. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I mean, what kind of kid throws a doll out the window and not just in the bin? A spoiled one, that's who. Listen, don't buy your kids dolls <laughs> or creepy looking things. Would you buy your child a clown toy? Maybe you would, I don't know. Thank you so much for that story. That is a perfect sleepover story though, wasn't it? That's the kind of thing you want to happen to yourself at sleepover but at someone else's house and then have nothing to do with it for the rest of your life. Well, that is the look. I don't really know what this look is. I just wanted to try out the auric eyeshadow and the um, skin thing, which is really nice. I think I might need to shade darker, but once it's all blended in, it's all fine. Um, yeah, thanks again for joining me. If you have any ghost stories, paranormal stories, weird uh, stories, <laughs> then go ahead and send them right here to this email address. Thank you again for joining me. Please subscribe for future videos like this, and I will see you very, very soon. Have an amazing week. Bye.